Rusty Fermin talking about John McAleese and myself, friendship over the years, how we met, what we did after we met throughout the commandos and SAS. And it's 46 years ago now, 1974, since I met John. <clears throat> John and I, along with some other lads, turned up at the Royal Citadel in Plymouth, which is where the commando courses were held. John was a Royal Engineer. I was from Fort Nine Field Regiment Royal Artillery. A bit of a footballer. Once we got to the Citadel and we met each other, as I say, along with some other great guys on that particular course, it was time to put the head down and get into gear. John, a rough guy from Scotland, up in Falkirk. Rusty, a guy from Carlisle. Someone says a Scotsman with his head kicked in right on the border, but we became friends straight away. John and I teamed up on day one of the commando course. The one thing about John is, or was, he was a very, very fit guy. It was uh, strange really. John had tremendous upper body strength. And as far as I'm aware, he's about the only guy I've ever seen that has veins on the outside of his body when he tenses those muscles. Me, much more endurance than upper body strength. However, the commando training changed that. John always seemed to excel on things like the um, regains, which is on rope, getting yourself back onto the rope. And I would excel when they couldn't stop me when I was running with packs on, with weight on. That's what I liked. However, the Royal Citadel, for those who don't know, is right on the hoe in Plymouth. The reason I ended up there and met John is because I thought about doing 7 para RHA, but actually it was Aldershot, 2-9 Commando in Plymouth, Aldershot Plymouth, yeah, I picked Plymouth, but I had friends in both 7th para RHA and 2-9 Commando. Once we got stuck into the hard work, um, training, Every day being beasted as you normally do, either in the paras or the commandos. But it was something we enjoyed because we knew at the end of the day when people were cleaning their kit and all their webbing and stuff they had on full of mud and all the rest of it. Me and John used to wander down the hill to what is these days even now called the Hogay Laundromat. At the uh, Citadel Gates, straight down the hill, dump your stuff off there, say to the woman, I'll be back in a couple of hours, she'd do everything for you, wash it, dry it, clean it, whatever needed doing. We'd go and have some cider in those days, yeah, it was the rough cider where you couldn't see through a pint. You look at one side, now you can see his bits floating about in it. Well, we used to mask that a little bit with the sort of dark black currant juice. Didn't change the flavour too much but it was much more tasty. So the first part of the course is as normal. The instructors are looking for possibly the weaker links. And as they disappear day by day and go back to the unit from where they came, the rest carry on. Now, it would be unfair to say it was the all arms commando course in my day. I don't know what it is today. You could volunteer from the um, engineers, you could volunteer from the artillery, you could volunteer from um, the REMI, Royal um, Electrical and Mechanical Engineers. A chef or chefs, they used to volunteer. But as time went on over the month, you do find that people drop out. Therefore, the commando instructors can then actually dig in with them and then they have the nucleus of what they expect barring injury to get through 
to the very end of the commando training. Yes, it was rough. Yes, we used to use the likes of a place called Bickley, where they had the rope course, Tarzan course, if you want to call it. We had our own assault course at the Citadel. Numerous runs, especially the one around the Citadel, where you just used to run round and round and round until somebody decided, hey, let's give these guys a break. However, character building, yes, teamwork, yes, discipline, yes, everything you would expect because the people who pass that course, all the guys on the course, the ones who get through that month at the Royal Citadel don't get a green berry. What happens to them is they are then singled out by name. You are then told you've passed this or you haven't, the ones that were left. John and I were still very good friends and um, we drank together, we worked together, we trained together and it was all part of building our friendship but also digging out with the lads on the course. Every night somewhere there was a beer for the likes of us. Some guys used to go to bed early um, but not me and John, we'd just stay out, have a few beers, pick up our kit, go back in and get ready for the next morning. Never late for parade. And that's the secret. If you can't take it, don't do it. So at the end of the month, um, John and I passed, along with Ginge and a few of the other lads, great guys. And over the weekend, you move yourself down to Limson, which is the home of the commandos, Royal Marine commandos, and then you prepare yourself for the next part of the course. Don't forget, this is part one. Um, the dogs played up a little bit there, but I'll go and pick them up in a minute. I've just knocked them out. Only joking. But hey, part one. Don't forget to subscribe to Rusty Fermin SS. SAS TV, which is a YouTube channel. If you subscribe to that, each and every video I do will be on there. And look forward to catching up with some of you on my travels. Who dares wins? Rusty.